So today I'm going to be sharing with you some easy and simple lunch ideas. Now as you know, I've done quite a few what I ate today videos as well as some individual recipe videos, but I've never made a compilation of recipes for one specific meal. So that's what I thought I would do today. Just share with you some lunches that I like to make when I'm at home and I'm in need for a meal for lunch because let's be honest, I don't just want to have a sandwich for lunch, like that's boring. And these lunches are suitable if you need to go to school or work, but I would recommend prepping these beforehand, like the night before, because some of these can be a little bit time consuming. Like they're pretty straightforward to make, but the preparation and cooking time can sometimes take a while. And I know some of these lunches may look intimidating at first, but once you get going and know what you're doing, you'll find that these are really easy and simple to make. So let's get started with these lunch ideas. Okay, so the first lunch idea I'm going to show you are these anything rice paper rolls. And I'm saying that because you can literally put anything in them. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a kettle and just fill it up with water and put it on to boil. And while it's boiling, you're just going to grab a small bowl and get some rice noodles. It doesn't matter what kind, thick thin, whatever you have. I'm using these thick ones and you're just going to break off a small bit. There's no exact measurement for it. Just a rough estimate. That'll be enough for how many rice paper rolls you want to make, I guess. And I'm sorry for anyone I offended by breaking the noodles in half, but I just had to get them in the bowl somehow. And once you do get them in the bowl, once your water's finished boiling, you're just going to take it and pour it all over the rice noodles. And you want to make sure that they're fully covered so that they cook evenly and then you're gonna grab a chopping board and a knife and just get the ingredients you want to add to your rice paper rolls and as I said you can literally add anything any type of veggie any type of protein just whatever you've got will do what I did was I started off with a carrot and I just cut the ends off and cut it in half horizontally and then I cut those halves in half again and from those halves I just cut them into little strips to make carrot sticks. Try to make them small but I'm just lazy and then I'm going to take a cucumber and cut the ends off that and then do the same thing. So cut it in half, cut those halves in halves to make quarters and cut it into little strips and depending on how much you're making you may not even need to use all of the carrot and all of the cucumber. Just use how much you want and then I just got a couple of bunches of spring onions and then just finally chopped that and then I grabbed a small bunch of mint leaves and got a herb cut and just chop those up very finely and then I did the same with the coriander grabbed a small bunch of that cut off the stalks and then cut it all up with the herb cutter so once that's done we're gonna take our bowl of rice noodles and we're just gonna drain it it's best if you use a strainer or a colander or whatever you have but I just did it the old lazy way and poured out the water very carefully trying not to spill all the noodles in the sink I don't need no noodle strainer and then we're just gonna set those aside and then get out a large bowl and just gonna fill it up with cold water. You wanna fill it enough so that you can easily dunk a rice paper sheet in there. You're gonna grab a cutting board or any sort of flat surface you can put the rice paper sheets on and then you're gonna grab a rice paper sheet and just dunk it in the cold water. And you don't even need to do it for that long, just a few seconds, take it out and lay it on the cutting board. And you may have heard that you need to use hot water in order to soften the rice paper sheet but all it needs, surprisingly, is just a few seconds in cold water because otherwise it's just going to fall apart. At least that's what I've found in my experience. So once you've done that, just put your toppings on it. So do a small handful of rice noodles and then a small handful of carrot, a small handful of cucumber, a small handful of spring onion, a small handful of mint, a small handful of coriander, and I also used a small handful of baby spinach as well, and then a small piece of ham. So, as I said, you can put anything in these. You don't have to use what I'm using. Use what you want. But once you have put what you want in your rice paper rolls, you're going to roll them up. And I'm not very good at this, but what you want to try to do is you want to take the edge that has got all the filling in it and just roll it over till you've reached the end of the filling, if that makes sense. And then you want to gather the sides and tuck them in and then grab the other end and 
tuck it over the first end, if that makes sense. I'm not very good at explaining this and I'm not very good at showing you how to do this because I'm terrible at this. The rice paper packet will show you how and there are heaps of tutorials on the internet that you can look up so hopefully those will help and you'll get the hang of it. It can take practice but you'll get there in the end if you have the patience to do so. So once you've done that, literally just repeat all that. So dip the rice paper sheet into the cold water for a few seconds, place it on the flat surface, add the rest of your fillings, little at a time, depending on how much you're making. I always overstuff these, so try to control how much you're putting in, and then fold the rice paper rolls, so filling end in, sides in, and then other end in, and then boom, you've got your rice paper roll. And then put it on a plate, and keep going until you've used up all the rice noodles and all the fillings. In fact, if you don't want to, you don't even have to use the rice noodles. You could use other noodles, you don't even have to add noodles at all. The rice paper sheets aren't going to care what you stuff them with. You do you. And then once you've done all that, there you have it. Your rice paper rolls. You could add a sauce on the side like soy sauce or sweet chili sauce or whatever sauce you want to use. But as I said, put whatever your heart desires in them. This is just what I chose to use. And as you might have thought, six was definitely way too many for me so I had to share them and they were definitely a hit in my household so if you end up making more than your share share it with others I guarantee they'll like them this next lunch idea are these chunky vegetable fritters and I call them that because as you can see there are vegetable chunks in these fritters but that's okay it all adds to part of the meal if that's what you're after so I'm just gonna go to the fridge and grab the vegetables that I want to use and you can honestly use any vegetable that's left over in your fridge just use what you have it'll bound to work for these fritters the first vegetable I'm using is a zucchini so I'm just gonna chop the ends off that and then we're not gonna cut it we're actually going to grate it with just a regular cheese grater or any sort of grater will do the trick honestly just something that'll grate the zucchini into shreds. Then once I couldn't grate any more, I just emptied the zucchini from the grater into a large bowl. And this is what we're gonna put our fritter mixture into. And then I'm taking a carrot and I'm basically doing the same thing. Just chopping the ends off and grating it with the grater until I can't grate any more carrot. And then once I'm done, I'm adding the shredded carrot into the bowl with the shredded zucchini. And overall, both those shredded vegetables make about two cups each. So if you're using store-bought shreds, then that's how much you'll need, roughly. Then I'm taking a red capsicum, and no, we're not going to be grating it. I'm just going to take out the middle part and get as much of the white part as I can out of the capsicum. I don't really worry about the seeds too much. If they stay in there, stay in there. But if you want to take them out, then do so. And I've split the capsicum in half, and I'm just going to cut it into strips vertically. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to cut those strips horizontally. So we're sort of dicing them. Well, I guess you probably should be dicing them, but I'm just lazy and do bite-sized chunks. So it still works, just makes the fritters a bit chunky, hence the name of them. And then once I'm done cutting up the capsicum, I'm just going to add that to the bowl that's got the shredded carrot and zucchini in it. And then I'm taking two bunches of spring onions and cutting the white parts off and then just slicing the spring onions just finely. Try to make them as small as I can, but if they end up a little big, that's okay. Just keep going until we get to the very end of the green part. And then once I'm done, just adding it to the bowl. And then I'm getting out three cloves of garlic. I like my garlic. If you don't want that much garlic, you can use less cloves of garlic, or you don't even have to use it at all. Up to you, or you can use more. Do what you want and just cutting the ends off those and then peeling off the skin because we don't want garlic skin in our fritters now do we and then I'm just finally chopping up the garlic it's probably better if you mince it but I couldn't be bothered and then we're just adding that to the bowl once we're done next we're gonna get out the rest
rest of the ingredients that we need for our fritters. So just some plain flour or all-purpose flour and some eggs. And first we're going to add two-thirds of a cup of the flour, aka the rest of this bag as that's all that was left. Next we're going to add two eggs and just crack them into the bowl. And it's actually probably better if you lightly beat them a little bit before adding them. But if you don't, like me, because I was lazy, no big deal. And then I'm adding a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and a little grinding of pepper and then I'm just mixing everything around with a wooden spoon just until the flour and the egg and everything is all absorbed into the vegetables because you want to have enough flour and egg so that the vegetables will all bond together in order to create those fritters. So just keep stirring the mixture until everything is well combined. Then I'm going to drizzle some oil in a frying pan around two tablespoons worth and I'm just going to put that on the heat and wait for it to heat up by hovering my hand over the oil to see if it's hot enough. And once it is, I'm going to take a tablespoon of the fritter mixture at a time and place it into the frying pan. My frying pan will hold about four at a time, but every frying pan is different. So only do as many as your frying pan can hold at a time. And we'll just leave those to cook. They take about two to three minutes on each side. And then once that time is past you just want to flip them and cook them for another two to three minutes or until they're golden brown and crispy on each side and then we'll just transfer them over to a plate and then add more tablespoons of the mixture into the frying pan cook them two to three minutes on each side and then transfer them to a plate once they're done and just keep going until you've used up all of the fritter mixture and there you have it chunky veggie fritters feel free to pair them with any sort of sauce sour cream or greek yogurt would work really well but i didn't have any of that so i just ate them naked whoa there don't be getting ideas but they're so delicious and a great way to get more veggies in with these delicious chunky vegetable fritters they are so good the next lunch i have are dumb sims get it dumplings and dim sims. Okay, I'm sure that joke's been made probably many times before, so it's probably not that funny, but basically, just gonna get some dumplings and dim sims. You can get the boxed ones, like you get from the supermarket, or you can make your own, but I'm lazy and I don't know how to make those. So, supermarket ones it is, and just gonna boil some water in a saucepan, and then once it's boiled, put a steamer on top and put the dumplings and dim sims in. And these are just pork and ginger dumplings and just regular standard dim sims that you use for steaming and you're going to steam them both for about 10 minutes and then after 10 minutes take them out put them on a plate and there you go dumb sims dumplings and dim sims and i had mine with an orange mango kombucha because you know i love my kombucha and then you got to have some sauces with them so we've got this tamari sauce which is basically just soy sauce and this ginger sweet chili sauce and you can have the sauces on the side or you can just pour on over the top whichever you prefer but once you've got that done there you have it just these basic dump sims dumplings and dim sims this next lunch idea is trz chicken tortellini and you might be wondering What's TRZ? Tomato, ricotta, and zucchini, of course. You know, like BLT, bacon, lettuce, and tomato. I know, I need to stop with these jokes. And all you need to do is just put some water on to boil, and then you can chop up the stuff that will go in the little tomato and ricotta sauce. So, you know, your basics, your onion, your garlic, and then put some oil in a saucepan and saute the onion and garlic and then also chop up some zucchini and add that in as well and the tomato and ricotta sauce and you just mix it around and you want it to sort of have like a thick sauce consistency that you can put on pasta and by that point the water that you put on to boil should be boiling away and so you just put the tortellini in and on this day chicken tortellini was used but honestly there's so many different types of tortellini and pasta that you can use for this Spinach and ricotta can also work, beef, or you could even use ravioli or just any sort will do. 
and you just cook that for around five to ten minutes or until soft or the texture that you like al dente if you will and then once you're done drain the tortellini place it in a bowl and then place the trz sauce over the top of it and there you go trz chicken tortellini because that's what it is i couldn't come up with a better name for it but it is so quick and easy to make and is an oh so delicious way to have chicken tortellini so the next lunch idea is pie and salad get it it's like fish and chips but instead of fish we're using a pie and instead of chips we're using salad that's what it is all you need to do is heat an oven to 180 degrees and just get any sort of pie today a classic refrigerator meat pie was used but you use whatever kind of pie you want you could even make it yourself but i can't be bothered to make that but that's just going in the oven for around 25 minutes or until it's fully heated through and the pastry is nice and crispy well as crispy as it can be considering it came from a box and while it's cooking i'm gonna make some salad so we're just using half a cucumber that was left in the fridge a handful of baby spinach leaves and a small bit of store-bought potato salad and just put that all onto a plate and once the pie is ready take it out of the oven and put it on the plate as well and there you go pie and salad this is the new fish and chips guys it has such a ring to it doesn't it nah of course nothing will ever beat fish and chips but a nice pie and salad is good to have from time to time this next and final lunch idea is overloaded Hawaiian pizza because it really is an overloaded pizza. This is definitely the most time consuming of them all, but it's still relatively easy. So what you need to do is preheat your oven to 220 degrees and you're going to get out a large oven tray and a large bowl along with a sifter. You're going to get out some self-raising flour and sift in two cups of it and then you're going to take a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and just add that in. Then you're going to get the scales and measure out 30 grams of butter. And you want to just roughly chop the butter up into small pieces or break it up. It doesn't have to be precise. Just have the butter in small pieces so you can then put it in the flour and salt and just rub it in until it's all blended in. And you don't want the butter to stick to your hands too much and you don't want big clumps of butter in the mixture. You're then going to get out some milk and add a cup of it to the mixture and you're just going to mix and knead it to make a soft dough and if it's getting too dry and big clumps of flour falling out just add a little bit more milk till it gets to the consistency and it may take quite a bit of kneading but just be patient with it it'll get there in the end. Then with the baking tray that you got out earlier put some baking paper on it and then you're going to place the dough on it and roll it out with a rolling pin until it's around 34 centimeters in diameter. I'm not sure if this is 34 centimeters, but something like this and something resembling a pizza dough that you would normally see. But something like this should be good. Then you're gonna get out a can of pineapple pieces and you're just gonna drain the liquid out of it via a sieve. And depending on how much pizza you're making, you probably won't need to use all of this. And I definitely didn't need to use all of this, but just use as much as you need to. And then you're gonna take some ham and use roughly the same ratio to the amount of pineapple that you're using. And what we're gonna be doing is just finally chopping up the ham. I'm just gonna add some mushrooms I think I use four, I think. But of course, it's all personal preference. So use as many as you want and use as many that'll actually fit on the pizza as well. Keep that in mind, which I definitely didn't when I was making this. Then you're going to get out some cheddar cheese and you're going to grate about two cups worth of it. Then we're going to return to our pizza base and add a tablespoon of oil to it. And you're just going to get one of these little brushes. I don't know what they're called. And you're just going to brush the dough with 
the oil just evenly all around because this is what's going to help it get nice and crispy and then you're going to take a quarter of a cup of tomato paste and you're going to take a spoon and just spread it all over the pizza then you're going to take the grated cheese and just sprinkle it all over try to make it even and then I'm just adding the mushrooms and then the ham and the pineapple as you can see this is way too much which I always have a tendency to do I always over measure everything I always over stuff everything I always overload everything it's just my thing but hey it's all part of the cooking experience I guess and then this is optional but if you want that extra little hit of flavor just take half a teaspoon of powdered oregano or dried oregano whatever you want to use just sprinkle that all over the pizza which I like to do for a nice little flavor punch and we're just going to place that into the oven and cook it for around 20 to 25 minutes or until it's nicely browned and crispy but definitely don't let those edges burn so take it out of the oven and then I'm just taking a pizza cutter and this makes around eight slices well if you're doing the size of my slices anyway and as you can see this is why you don't overload a pizza because then the toppings just fall off when you try to cut it or eat it but once you have cut up the pizza there you have it, overloaded Hawaiian pizza. And hey, overloaded's probably better than underloaded because there's nothing as underwhelming as a pizza with two little toppings, right? That's just so disappointing. So why not make an overloaded one instead? So that is it for these easy and simple lunch ideas. Perfect for when you're in need of something new for lunch and tired of having your regular old sandwich. I hope these lunches gave you some inspiration and that you'll try some of these out and hope it goes well for you. Do let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more videos like this where I share some recipes for specific meals. We could do breakfast, dinner, snacks, dessert, more lunch stuff. But thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any new videos. So, to next time, in my next video, I shall see you then. Goodbye.